Hey friends, so welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have a Christmas Decorate With Me marathon. So this marathon is actually a compilation of all of my 2021 Christmas Decorate With Me videos from back when we used to live in Texas. Now, you may be wondering, why are you sharing videos that are two years old? Well, the answer to that is that this is the last time I decorated for Christmas, and the reason for that is because last year we moved back to Florida. We didn't have a house until December the 22nd, so I never got the chance to decorate, which makes me so excited to do it this year. And because of that, I started playing these videos to kind of remember how I decorated and how I did things and grab ideas, remember my own ideas essentially. And I started feeling really nostalgic. So I figured why not resharing this content into a single video so we can warm up for the decorating season that's about to start, at least for me, because I do decorate early to give you ideas in the YouTube world. We have to do it early so you have time to go source whatever you wanna source and recreate your own ideas in your decor. So in this marathon, I'm going to show you how I decorated two Christmas trees. I'm going to show you a great idea for your tablescape area. I'm going to be decorating my kitchen and what it was, my hot beverage station. I'm also going to be decorating my front porch, a guest room. All of those are going to be super doable, yet super nice ideas that you can easily recreate at home. And if you are a beginner, I have included my two guides on how to decorate your Christmas tree like a professional and how to add ribbon to your Christmas tree at the end of this marathon. So if you want to learn more, stay tuned for those. If you're a beginner, those tips are going to come in really handy to kind of start getting the hang out of the element that goes into Christmas trees and of course how to handle ribbon. Now I do plan to give more tips this year, however, I will go more in debt into how to do things, whereas these are some more basic concepts and basic tips. If you enjoy this video, I really hope you can consider subscribing to my channel. It does help a lot. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time to watch this marathon. And without any further ado, let's just jump right into the decorating. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are at my home because I'm going to be cleaning and decorating for Christmas this year. This video is going to be the first one where I'm actually decorating my home for the holidays. So if you like this video and you wanna see more, I really hope you can consider hitting that red subscribe button down below. And without any further ado, let's just jump right in. Down, and it is cold outside, we gather around The first thing I'm working on is my entryway table. I'm actually rearranging this console table. I'm going to wipe it down very well. And I'm going to start the Christmas decoration in this area with this beautiful flocked garland that I got from Walmart this year. These little Christmas trees were something I always imagined on this console table decor for Christmas. And I also got these at Walmart. They have lights, they are absolutely beautiful. But I do have to say that working with flocked garlands and trees is very, very messy. So you wanna keep that in mind in case you're doing an entirely flogged Christmas tree this year. This piece I actually got from Hobby Lobby in the unfinished wood area. I got it 50% off and I spray painted it black with chalk paint. And then this wreath I had from last year, it came from Walmart as well. I just decorated it with that red bow last year. And then these candle holders you may recognize from my fall video because I used them on my console table as well this merry sign came from walmart this year this is going to be the walmart spot you guys but i loved how this turned out mm -hmm. 
After recording my tutorial videos for Christmas on how to put ribbon on a Christmas tree, I noticed that the Christmas tree we had was too little for this house. We didn't live in this house last year, so I didn't know that it was going to be that small until I put it up. I'm actually going to insert a picture right here. So we got this new Christmas tree from Sam's Club. This is a nine foot Christmas tree and I thought it was so beautiful. I was so excited when I saw it lit up for the first time. And it is cold outside. We gather around the fireplace. My first vision for this Christmas tree was to decorate it with red, white, and black and using a lot of plaid and velvet for reasons I'll explain later. But when I decorated the Christmas tree with these elements, I ended up not loving it and so I decided to undecorate the Christmas tree and redecorate it the next day, which was a lot of work. I did change a few elements, which was the second shot of the decorations you saw but basically i just reduced a lot of the black and just took out all the velvet it was the night but because it was a lot of work to decorate and film which i did film that decor i decided to include that christmas tree on my cleaning video that is going to go live tomorrow on my cleaning channel so stay tuned for that if you want to check it out jingled once more and then time almost came to the stop so on this Christmas tree, I started with some ribbon and now I'm creating kind of like garland of large ornaments. This is something I saw on a designer's website and I thought it was beautiful and I thought I'm recreating it. So what I'm going for this year on my Christmas tree is definitely something a little different. For the last four years, I've been going for a very country farmhouse Christmas tree, but this year I wanted to recreate something that will bring me back to my childhood i've been missing my mom a lot and i kind of wanted to do something that she would do when i was a kid and she would use a lot of red colors a lot of bright things she will always create something very charming and very elegant and very fun to look at so that's exactly what i did with this christmas tree and i certainly got out of my comfort zone by using glittery ornaments and by using even a little bit of silver, which is something I never do. But it was so worth it because I ended up loving the final result. For the topper, I'm just going with a bunch of stems that I am combining the colors that i told you originally black white and red and i'm using different textures same colors but just different shapes and textures these stars are going to be my statement piece and if you watch my video on how to decorate a christmas tree like a professional you would know what i'm talking about i'm gonna link that video down below in case you want to check it out Now I'm going to go in with my special ornaments. This Noel from 1987 and this Christmas from 1982 are ornaments that my mother-in-law passed to me from when Luke was a baby. The one from 1982 is actually his ornament from the year he was born. So these ornaments are so special to me. All of them come from when he was a baby and there's just so much history behind them. And I'm always going to cherish these no matter what kind of Christmas tree I decorate. I'm always going to use them and put them up. From this Christmas 
And if you like more neutral, maybe gold and silver Christmas decor, stay tuned for next week's video because I'll be decorating my dining room area with a smaller Christmas tree in those colors. And I want to take this opportunity while I decorate my Christmas tree to remind us all that the reason for Christmas is the coming of baby Jesus, meaning that you don't necessarily have to go and buy a ton of new decor to feel more festive. You gotta have Christmas in your heart, and I know this sounds very corny, but it is the truth. Even though I have a shopping channel and I am obsessed with home decor, I don't want you to feel pressure to go out and buy new decor this year. I create these videos to inspire you and motivate you to decorate your house with things that you may already have or new things that you may wanna get. But always remember that Christmas is in your heart and in the way you can make your family and your home feel in Jesus, which goes beyond all the decor that you could buy. And I know I got a little religious right there, but isn't Christmas a religious holiday? Jesus is the reason for the season and let's just never forget about that. And in case you're curious, I'm going to insert a picture right here of my first Christmas tree from when me and my husband got married. I've talked about this before, but back then he was still active duty in the army and we could not afford a ton of decor in general. So I created that Christmas tree with a ton of things my mother-in-law gave to me, a bunch of ribbon to cover a lot of the tree in a cheap way yet this christmas tree will always occupy a special place in my heart When I was done with my special ornaments, I went ahead and added some ball ornaments in white and silver, and then I added all of the remaining stems that I had. And then to finish off the tree, I got this skirt from Hobby Lobby and these two bells to decorate the bottom of the Christmas tree. But I must confess, I was not very happy with how these looked, so I decided to hang them off the tree. And to do so safely, I would recommend, because these are heavy items, I would recommend you using at least two stems of your Christmas tree to hold a heavy item like this. But I'm so happy I made the decision to hang them to or off the Christmas tree because they look so much better up there. In here, I had decided to just go ahead and finish all the ornaments, the red ornaments I had left. And to cover that outlet, I just used this basket with a blanket and this Merry Christmas pillow that I had from last year. And honestly, I really loved how this Christmas tree turned out. Probably my favorite one that I've ever created. And my mom saw it and she thought it was beautiful. So I definitely accomplished the mission. Everything but you These are the good times with you Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me To decorate my entertainment center, I'm using these nutcrackers that my mom passed to me in the second shelf, I'm going to use this carousel, which comes from Luke's grandmother, and it's just so beautiful. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories. Oh, oh. 
then on the third shelf, I'm going to replicate the same thing with the nutcrackers. I'm adding that small Christmas tree in those small houses that I got from the Target dollar spot from last year. And honestly, I like to see it as if the nutcrackers are guarding the small town. To me, it looks super cute. With Christmas lights, so you should come back home to me. And when we wake up in the morning, I'm gonna play those carols that you love. We'll be singing all the melodies until the sun comes up. These are the good times with you, baby. This shelf will have a ton of white elements and because it's going to be a lot of white on white, I added that green stem in the background just to give a little bit more of depth, especially to that tabletop piece. This shelf will contain one of my favorite wedding pictures another piece of tabletop decor and this snowman that my mom passed to me she has had this since i can remember and i love it and it actually combines very well with these other two elements when in doubt i always grab a vase and tie a bow around it so the way I do that is basically making a knot and then I make two loops that I tied like I normally would and that will give me a bow. You just have to play around it so that all the pieces will go on their pro proper place so that the bow will look beautiful. So I just like to cut the tips like if it was a Christmas gift and this piece will support a Santa Claus that my mom gave to me and I thought the colors will look very cute together as you may see here. I pair these two with a couple of flocked pine cones. Let's go outside, the snow is falling down and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. We're holding hands to keep each other. And then this is how this side of my entertainment center turned out. I really, really loved how this came out, even though I just improvised with the things I had. And drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas. A moment will fill with love. And that is going to be everything for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if this video gave you any new ideas or inspiration for your Christmas decor this year. Stay tuned for next week's Christmas Clean and Decorate With Me video where I'll be decorating my dining room table and a smaller Christmas tree in that area. If you liked this video, subscribe if you haven't already and I really hope I can see you in my next one. Bye. Reach a place we could stay Maybe kiss a bit and dream away And in a while we're gonna go inside And drink our chocolate by the fire Cause all I want is to spend this day with you Let me give you a Christmas moment Last year I thought about How things can come around just like that If everyone is here to celebrate one day We have our Welcome back to my channel. 
Today's video is going to be another Christmas clean and decorate with me for Christmas 2021. And in this video, I'll be working on my dining room area. I'll be setting up my tablescape. I'll be putting up a smaller Christmas tree and I'll be also putting up my nativity scene. So if you like this video, I really hope you can consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and let's just jump right in. If you miss my shop with me videos, don't you worry because we are going to go shopping for more Christmas decor this week. But as you can see, I started off by wiping down my dining room table. And you may recognize this runner and these placemats from my fall decorate with me video but i'm reusing them for the season because i want to keep this area very neutral i want the star of the show to be these plates that my mother-in-law passed to me this year she bought them from different stores when my husband was six years old and he recalls to be walking around different stores with my mother-in-law holding plates as she was trying to collect the entire set she also passed to me these beautiful crystal glasses that came from her mother i think these are beautiful i definitely wanted to display them and make them the star of the show but I also wanted this tablescape to be easy to transform or adapt into Thanksgiving because we are hosting it this year and that's why I kept all the colors very toned down, kind of like winter wonderland for this area. So this is the centerpiece I'm working on. I'm starting with this folded garland. I'm going to add some lights and now I'm going to work on some bows. So in my kitchen clean and decorate with me video for Christmas, I share with you how I create my bows with a template but if you don't have a template or you don't want to create one yourself you just simply create two loops with your ribbon tie them together and make sure that the bow is looking pretty by arranging very well those loops then i'm going to create an oval with more ribbon making sure the ends of the oval match the loops of the bow that i have already created and i'm going to attach that to the center of the bow using ornament hooks you can use any wire you have you can use even dental floss if that's what you have so you're going to repeat this process for as many loops you want on your bow i repeated this process one more time making sure that i am tightening up that center very very well and if you do want to see how I create those bows using a template, stay tuned because later in this video, I'm going to show you how I do that with that method. A sunny day, but it's cold outside. It tingles in my heart. I added one bow to each end of my folded garland and now I'm going to go in with some flocked pine cones and put them all around the centerpiece. It feels like I'm a kid, like I'm forever young. And that's why I want to sing about the Christmas on its way. I also added some silver stems just to highlight a little bit that centerpiece and I'm going to put it on my table on top of the table runner of course and then I'm going to add a beautiful reindeer that I got from Hobby Lobby this year which I think it matches all the decor pretty well. I like to think that this reindeer is coming out of the woods by just putting it on top of this garland. I think it turned out very beautiful and adorable. And I'm going to finish off this tablescape with a couple of candles in black candle holders in these silver Christmas trees that also came from Hobby Lobby this year. And that's why I wanna sing about the Christmas on its way. A reason to hang around and celebrate this day Everyone's smiling and it's snowing It's the time of year again I'm happy you're here My winter wonderland No 
next project to work on this area is going to be the dining room Christmas tree. I'm going to keep it silver, gold, off-white, and off-gold. And this idea came from these mirror snowflake ornaments that I was in love from Hobby Lobby, even from last year. They brought them back this year, so I thought it was a sign to do my Christmas tree with them. So I started with a smaller Christmas tree. I added ribbon to just one side. If you want to know how I did that, I'm going to make sure to link my guide on how to hang ribbon off your Christmas tree from this year. I'm starting off with the toppers, which is a bunch of different stems that I thought will pair very beautiful together. And I'm placing them at different heights just to give it a little bit more dimension. those large gold snowflakes as my statement pieces for this Christmas tree and I have a couple of comments to do about these shots. So first of all, my dining room area has very funny lighting, so I am so sorry about that in this video, but it's always the hardest area to film at in my house just because there's windows everywhere and it's just a little bit complex to play around with lighting and filming. The second thing is that this is our old Christmas tree, very small, but also this Christmas tree has gone through two movings, one of them out of state actually, and we actually lost the little part that keeps the Christmas tree straightened. So if you see the, that it's a little tilted, it's because of that. I want to find a solution for it. If you know how can I solve this, let me know in the comment section down below. But now I'm just adding all of my highlight ornaments, placing them in strategic places. And I really had a lot of fun creating this Christmas tree because I've never decorated with these colors before and I really love how it was turning out. I'll be making plans, make you For my filler ornaments, I'm using these off-white balls that I got from Hobby Lobby and also some matte silver ornaments as well. They pair very beautiful together. And I had explained on a previous video how I like to hang these ornaments. I use hooks, but I make sure there's no space between the stem and the ornament by rolling that hook all the way through. The snowflakes are the only ones that, that I was hanging with the cord that they came in. And at this point, I'm just making sure that there's no empty spaces on this Christmas tree from every angle that it may be seen in the house. Finishing off this Christmas tree by basically putting all of the leftover stems that I had and I'm taking my time to make sure I can place them proportionally around the tree. I basically like to take a step back and see how everything is looking and if I want to change something then I go ahead and change, change it at that stage. Now I'm going to vacuum the bottom of the Christmas tree and add this tree skirt that matches the placemats I use on the table. And this is how this area is turning out. And don't you worry about that cord by the Christmas tree because I'm going to hide it in just a few moments. Da, 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 da. 
making our Christmas. The next project I'm going to be working on is going to be my nativity scene. And this is a very special project for me because number one, where I come from, nativity scenes are even more important than Christmas trees in people's houses. And number two, because growing up, my mom has this gorgeous nativity scene that came straight from Jerusalem and it was made with olive tree wood. And I always said I wanted one nativity scene like that. And when I got married, a few years back, my in-laws visited Israel for a religious trip and they surprised me with my own nativity scene from Jerusalem made with olive wood and oh my god, I, I could cry remembering <laughs> when I received that. So of course I'm going to place it. I think it's so important to remember why are we celebrating Christmas and it's because of the nativity of our savior. So I initially placed these colored lights, but as I was placing my nativity scene on that little table, I realized I did not like how they looked. So I decided to remove them and use something different. My house with Christmas lights, so you should come back home to me. And when we wake up in the morning, I'm gonna play those carols that you love. We'll be singing all the magic. I decided to use these wire lights that I had from last year. They are an absolute pain, let me tell you, and they are all tangled, but I figure if I place them kind of messy around the nativity scene, they would look good, so that's exactly what I'm doing here. And then to add a little bit more color to this area, I just added these two stems on the side of the nativity scene and some flocked pine cones. And this is how it turned out, absolutely adorable. And because this area in my house is so decorated, I didn't want to do this part very over the top. off this area in my house I'm going to be hanging the stockings off of those bookshelves but I want to place a garland a decorated garland there so I was working on that but my puppy didn't let me at all he wanted to play he wanted to just distract me so I took the garland to the kitchen island and continued applying the ribbon there We have three stockings from last year, one for me, one for my husband, and one for our dog, Sasha. Thor, which is the other dog you saw on a previous clip, we hadn't adopted him last year, so I didn't have a stocking for him this year, and I could not find these stockings anywhere in any store. So I figure Sasha and Thor will share one. And it looks very beautiful because it matches its tree skirt and the placemats that I used on the dining room table. So now I'm going to work on decorating that garland a little bit more. I'm going to create two bows for the ends of the garland. And in here, I am using those templates that I was talking about. So I basically cut some cardboard from boxes, shipping boxes. I created a gap in the center. I have one template that's 12 inches and then I have another template that's 9 inches. I basically wrap around the ribbon all over the template three times and I tied it up with dental floss in the center using that gap that I cut. Now you might be laughing that I'm using dental floss but it's actually stronger than you think. Once the bow was ready I basically lifted and fluffed those loops very well so that the center is very well hidden
finishing off this garland with some black ornaments and then I'm going to go in with some off-white ornaments. I also added a few decorated stems and the secret to applying these ornaments proportionally on the garland is to play around with the heights and the directions to which each ornament is going to be facing. You don't want to place them on a straight line or row because that'll make the decoration look a little plain. And this is how my dining room area turned out. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really hope you have enjoyed and found new ideas and new inspiration for your Christmas decor. Let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite decoration that I shared on this video. Again, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I really hope I can see you in the next one. Bye. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be decorating my kitchen for Christmas 2021. So if you like this video, I really hope you can consider hitting that red subscribe button down below. And let's just jump right in. I hope you are having a great day today. In today's video, like I said, I'm going to be decorating my kitchen for Christmas and my vision for my kitchen this year was that I wanted something very colorful, very fun, and that I wanted my counters free of space. I don't like crowded counters, so I'm going to be concentrating most of my decorations on the upper areas of my kitchen, you're going to see. So the first thing I'm doing is basically putting ribbon on a garland that's going to go on the top of my cabinets. This year, my in-laws gifted me a ton of their garland that they use, used to use on their staircase. And I am going to put it to use. I am going to add some ribbon, some flowers, and some pine cones to make it look a little bit more pretty up there. And I do have a video tutorial on how to add ribbon to your Christmas tree and the same principle applies to your garland. So if you wanna go ahead and check that video out, I'll be sure to link it down below. And as far as the flowers, I'll just make sure that they are all facing different directions so that they look a little bit more aesthetically pretty and pleasing. And this is how the garlands turn out. My next project for the kitchen will be hanging some mini wreaths to some of my upper cabinets. So the first thing I'm doing is measuring the ribbon. I'm using 22 inches of ribbon per wreath or 60 centimeters and that equals to two rulers. So I'm going to make a tiny knot at the end of the ribbon so that it can hang properly from the command hooks that I added to the back of the cabinets. Legs are And I'm going to repeat this process with all the mini wreaths I'll be using. To hang my wreaths, I simply added an inverted command hook on the back of my cabinets. The inverted command hook will hold the reed and the ribbon properly. And my cabinets happen to have a mark on the back that I use as a guide to put the command hook. 
If your cabinets don't have this, I strongly suggest you to measure the height of your command hooks so that all the reeds look the same. I like it this way because it doesn't damage your cabinets, especially if you remove the command hooks properly. And also it looks super pretty as if the reeds are coming out of the doors. Also, if your command hooks are not inverted, you can still hang the wreaths off the door. You just have to make an extra loop so that they hold. These cabinets were too high for me, so my husband was helping me there. And another important note is that I only added wreaths in every other of my upper cabinets, except for the ones on top of the fridge. Those do have a wreath each. My next project will be my main wreath. This will go on top of my hood. So I first unassemble that wreath I had from last year. And now in here, I'm making a bow using a template, which is basically a cut cardboard that I used. I made three loops around the template with my ribbon, and now I'm passing some dental floss. I did cut a line on the center of the cardboard to be able to do this and I'm using some dental floss to tie up my ribbon and I know it's so funny but I didn't have any thread or needles or anything like that and dental floss is actually stronger than you think. So once my bow was secured I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And when I open it up, I make sure that I lift all of those loops so that it looks like the center is kind of like on the bottom and the loops are lifted. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just what I'm doing with my hands. I feel like it looks so pretty and it just takes your bow to the next level. I repeated this process with this thinner ribbon and for this one I am going to use some ornament hooks to tie the bow up. And one thing that's very important to notice when doing a bow like this is that you do want to make sure that your ribbon is wired. The bow will not look the same if the ribbon is not wired so keep that in mind. This is a sketch of my wreath. I took a picture to make sure I remember how I place all the elements and now I'm going to go in and hot glue everything. It did take me a second to figure out how I wanted things. This wreath was also an idea I saw on Instagram and I wanted to mimic it for my kitchen because I thought it was beautiful with all the candy canes, the ornaments, and the nutcrackers. So I'm going to go ahead and hang my wreath finally and I'm going to still perfect some details once it's hung. This wreath is what I dreamed for my Christmas kitchen this year and I'm so happy it came through. This is the reason why I always encourage you all to create your own wreaths instead of buying pre-decorated ones at the store. The garlands I placed on top of the cabinets shed it a lot, so I'm going to clean my counters and wipe them down really well to proceed with some decorations. I told you all at the beginning of this video that I did not like, and I do not like, crowded countertops because me and my husband, we cook a lot in our kitchen. We always have friends over. There's always a lot going on in our kitchen, and the last thing I need is decorations costing a little bit more clutter also we have a lot of appliances that we like to keep on the countertops so i'm only going to keep my decor to just one station which is the one that you're going to see here so this station is very important in our kitchen because this is where we reach for spoons in olive oil to start cooking so i'm gonna have all of my utensils there that sign that it's just absolutely adorable. These rubber spatulas actually came from Target from last year from the dollar spot. 
just a few houses to make it look a little bit more cozy and then a few trees to make it look like it's a town and the pine trees are just back there and then the olive oil and there you have it pretty yet functional And of course, decorative towels are a staple for kitchen decor. I picked up mine from the Target dollar spot. I love them. They were so affordable and they are so cute. In a cabin out of nowhere, just us and no one else. I... As you can see, there's a lot going on on my kitchen island. And the, on this day was because I was filming this video and creating all the decorations, but normally it is this way. There's a lot going on in here all the time. That's why my kitchen island decor is going to be kept at a minimum. Something without a fuss, yet something that will complete the decor of the kitchen. And the amount of glitter that I was cleaning off the island was just surreal. It all came from that white ribbon that I use for the wreath. I am starting with this table runner, which looks a little bit more orange on video. It's actually more red in real life. I am going to use this simple cutting board and I'm just going to add some details to it. So this little Christmas tree came from the Target dollar spot. I believe it was like $5. This cocoa canister I had from Hobby Lobby last year and then this little snowman came from Hobby Lobby this year and it's just absolutely adorable. And that is going to be everything for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite project that I share with you on this video. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I really hope I can see you in the next one. Bye. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be cleaning and decorating my hot cocoa bar area for Christmas 2021. In this video, I'll also be sharing a project that I created with my Cricut, which I'm really excited to show you. So if you like this video, I really hope you can consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and let's just jump right in. The area where I'm going to be placing my hot cocoa bar this year is going to be my butler's pantry, which is conformed by a couple of cabinets and these shelves you see right here. The first thing I'm going to be doing is wiping down everything so that I can work with a clean area before I start to decorate. And the first thing I'm gonna do is hang wreaths off the two cabinets. On my kitchen clean and decorate with me video for Christmas, Y'all loved all the wreaths on the upper cabinets and I love them too so I decided to recreate them here just with a different ribbon. This ribbon however still gives all those North Pole candy cane vibes for the area that I love so much for my, from my kitchen as well. So I'm hanging them here with a command hook that I placed inverted in the back of 
the cabinet doors like I explained on my other video where I first did this. And this is how they look like. Then I'm going to proceed to decorate the first or the upper shelf. For that, I'm going to go in with a couple of little Christmas trees that I got from the Target dollar spot this year. I'm going to place them up there to give a little bit of a dimension and I'm going to twist a little bit the upper stems so that these trees can actually fit in the space. And then I'm going to use this tabletop decoration that I got from Marshalls and it's discounted because I did get it a little bit scratched up, but up there nobody's gonna notice, so it's all good. And then the second shelf is all about the details. I'm just working with mugs, little signs, little bee garlands, and I'm making sure that everything has dimension by using those mini stands that I got from Hobby Lobby. The next project I'm going to be working on is going to be this sign that I spray painted and I'm removing all the tape. This sign was something I imagined from day one since I started working on this hot cocoa bar and the perfect way to do it was with my Cricut Explore 3. Thank you so much Cricut for sponsoring this video but thank you so much to you all as well for all the support that you give to my channel because without you all this video will not have been possible. So the first thing I'm doing to create my sign is going into the Cricut Design Space, which is completely free. And those fonts I chose are also completely free. Crickets are cutting machines that can cut anything from vinyl to leather. As you can see here, the design space arranged all of my text into the size of the vinyl that I'm going to be using today. And I love that my Cricut measures all of the vinyl first before it starts the cutting process to make sure there's enough material to work with. And in here, my Cricut is doing all the cutting for me. This Explore 3 took about one minute to cut all the text that I did for this project. But what really excited me the most was the fact that I was going to be able to have a personalized hot cocoa bar sign. I really wanted one that said Ekman's hot cocoa bar because we are huge on coffee and hot chocolate in my family. So I knew that if I was going to try to find this sign on Etsy, it would have been so much more expensive and it would have taken forever to come in. Plus, the process of creating my sign was extremely fun. So you saw my Cricut cutting all the text and in here I'm just weeding all the letters. And you may think that this is a long and tedious process, but it really isn't by using all the Cricut tools. It is extremely easy and I will say even extremely satisfying. After I was done with the weeding process, I'm going to go ahead and transfer all of my text to my sign. And the way I do that is with the Cricut's transfer paper, which you're seeing me use right here. So one key thing about this process is to scrape really well so that you make sure your text or images are transferring to the transfer paper and ultimately to the surface that you're working on. And before I do the final transfer, I'm going to be aligning all of the words to make sure that everything is centered and that everything looks like it's supposed to. So I'm starting with the hot cocoa bar phrase first, and I was trying to take my time to make sure everything was straight and centered like I mentioned before. And I must confess that when I transfer her last name into this sign, it came out not that straight, but it was my fault because I struggle with those type of things. The thing is that it was something super easy to correct because I had used removable vinyl, so I just have to remove it and recut it again and just place it again onto my sign and it looked all fine. Now, if you are working with a list of things or a paragraph or something like I did right here, which was the list of things that the hot cocoa bar will provide, I will tell you to just work in one paragraph like I did right here because that will reduce your margin of error. And if you're wondering why I left the other half of the sign empty, you're going to see why. But this is when I went the second time with our last name and it looks so much better this way.
Once my project was ready, I was able to put it on my hot cocoa bar and I was loving how it was looking. So the reason why I left that portion of the sign half empty was to incorporate these canisters right here. So for the canisters, I wanted cookies, marshmallows, and hot cocoa, of course. And for these type of canisters, people always use the Oreos and arrange them this way. And they look beautiful, but we're really not Oreo people. We actually prefer chewy chocolate chip cookies. So that's what I'm working on right here. They still look adorable. Then I went in with mini marshmallows. And then I got this large thing of Swiss Miss from Walmart because that's our favorite hot chocolate. And I actually added this little scoop that I got from the party section from Walmart. And the three of these together look so adorable. Then I added my Keurig because this is going to be providing the hot water for the hot chocolate. And now on this corner, I'm going to be decorating this cake stand. So for this, I'm just going to be working with little details like that Santa mug, that sign that I got from Hobby Lobby, some sprinkles and some bowls. And to finish it all off, I'm going to add these small Christmas trees that I've been loving and putting everywhere basically. And I also found at Marshall's these disposable Snoopy cups for Christmas. We really don't use disposable cups all the time, but these will be nice to just grab a hot chocolate on the go. And this is how the hot cocoa bar turned out, but I felt like the door of my pantry needed a wreath. So let's just go ahead and work on that really quick. I found this wreath at Walmart for only $5. It was extremely affordable, so I'm going to make sure to open it up really well. I added these two ribbon bows, and I have shown in multiple videos now how to make these. It's pretty simple. I just used a bow template. So I incorporated those into my wreath, and now I'm going to add this nutcracker that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's the Baker Nutcracker. I thought it was adorable. And then I am also going to add these gingerbread cookies just for more details. And just to fill up the wreath, I'm going to be adding some pine cones all around it with hot glue because if you don't hot glue these, they will fall off, I can assure you. And then to finish off the wreath, I'm just going to add some cranberries and some candy canes to give it more color and to make it look more completed. And this is how my wreath ended up looking like in this area and I love it because I feel like it truly complements my hot cocoa bar. And also, who doesn't love a beautiful nutcracker on a wreath? I don't know about you, but they are just beautiful. And this is the final product with today's video. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. I did too. I love showing you how to work with my Cricut, and I also love all the details that I put into creating this space. Let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite idea that I share with you on this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I really hope I can see you in my next one. Bye. Hey friends, 
welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be decorating my front porch for Christmas with simple yet beautiful ideas. So if you like this video, I really hope you can consider subscribing and let's just jump right in. The first thing I'm doing is, of course, working on my wreath for my front door. However, while I do that, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce myself a little bit more in this video in case you're new. My name is Natalie and I post shop with me videos for home decor and decorate with me videos in this channel. I am 30 years old and I'm married to my husband. He is retired from the army. We live in Texas with our two adopted doggies and I post in this channel Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. However, I'm posting on a Thursday today because this is going to be an extra upload for this week. But if you like this video, I would really appreciate that you can consider subscribing to this channel and let me know in the comment section down below that you're new and what is it that you're struggling with your Christmas decor this year. If you do have any struggles, I'll be more than glad to give you some suggestions or help you out. It's the time of year. So as you can see, I'm attaching this Santa onto the wreath. I really wanted to do this and it was looking so beautiful, but I gotta say that this was a total fail. I had to change this and you're going to notice at the end of this video, but for now we're going to decorate this wreath with this Santa on the side. I love adding figures and ornaments and other elements just to give them an extra twist something that you cannot find at the store. So both the wreath and the Santa Claus came from Walmart. And I'm adding some lights. These lights were super affordable. I also was able to find them at Walmart. So I'm going to spread them out on the other half of the wreath that is uncovered. And there's something so magical about adding lights to anything if you don't have a lot to decorate a wreath with i will totally suggest you to add lights because no matter how your wreath looks the lights will always bring it up to the next level it's december again i can't believe it and if you're thinking that you don't have any plug or outlet near your wreath to add in lights, just get the battery operated lights because you don't have to plug them in. You can tuck in the control panel inside the wreath and it's going to look beautiful. You won't have any cables hanging around. So even if I had a plug near the wreath, I would rather using these lights more. They're also more affordable than regular lights in my opinion. I got these little stems from Hobby Lobby. They came with two ornaments and a little bell and a flocked pine cone. They were super affordable as well and they saved me so much time in assembling and decorating this wreath. And then I'm going to finish it all off with these red berry stems that are a staple in my Christmas decor. When I started decorating wreaths, I really had no idea what I was doing and I was not creating the prettiest wreaths either, but I was convinced that I could create something more affordable than what I could find at the store and even prettier because I knew that I could just make it to my own taste. But I have come a long way when I started my wreaths, my bows were not that pretty. So if you're starting, don't feel discouraged. We all start from somewhere. I have come a long way by practicing and observing. 
I have observed a lot of ideas on Instagram, on Pinterest. So if you're starting this year to create your own reads, let me give you some game changing tips. So the first thing is to select elements that can make an elaborated look. I like to select different kinds of ornaments. In my case, I have the buffalo check ornaments and the pine cones. I also like to select some decorative stems. In this case, I have the red cherries. I like to add ribbon and other elements that I could think it will look beautiful in a wreath. The next thing is to place them symmetrically on the wreath and each element facing into different directions around the wreath because if all your elements are facing up front, it's all going to look flat and lifeless. In here, I am creating some bows with some ribbon and I'm using a template that I have spoken about in several of my Christmas Decorate With Me videos. In the center, I tied up with some dental floss because it's really strong and it works really well for me. So I'm opening my bows and if you want to check a more detailed tutorial on how to create these, I'm going to link all of my Christmas Decorate With Me videos down below. I can assure you that in each one of those you'll find a bow tutorial so I'm attaching them with some hot glue and I'm going to put the black velvet underneath and then the plaid on top and this plaid I was so excited about because it really matches the jacket from the Santa Claus but at the end I had to take down the Santa Claus you're going to see why it was just not working out when the wreath was hanging snow is falling down I've been longing for this Christmas When everyone's around To share this holiday Yes, it's a time of happiness A time of joy But now this year is twice as special Cause I'm hoping for us to fall in love In this winter and for the bow tails, I simply cut two pieces of ribbon. I cut one end pointy and then I cut the other end as you would do with a gift so that it gives it a little extra charm. I might be crazy, but I think you feel it too. Like a vibration right between us with a beautiful two. And because my front door is really tall, I cannot put a reed holder. I have to put a command hook. So instead of hanging the wreath directly onto the command hook, what I do is that I attach two pieces of ribbon that will hold the wreath more safely and sturdy. Here's another mistletoe. Hours pass by. All the stars shine much brighter. Is it just your eyes that have lit something in me? Now we're going on to my front porch. I had this mat that I used for the fall season and I decided to leave it for the Christmas season as well. And then this mat or outdoor mat that says Mary and Bride I got from Sam's this year. I thought it was so beautiful that it was all red and white and I'm adding these two little Christmas trees that are pre-lit. I got them from Walmart last year and they were really affordable. I think it was like $25 for both of them. Now I'm going to add this little wooden slate that I got from Hobby Lobby this year. It was also very affordable because it was 50% discounted. And I know a lot of you are gonna ask for a link for the Christmas trees, but I don't have any because these are from last year, but I did not use them last year. I did not decorate my front porch last year because our house, the outside of the house last year was not landscaped, so I did not see any point in decorating for Christmas, although I did get these mini Christmas trees. So to the slate, I'm adding some ice skates. I am obsessed with figure skating. If you watch my first Decorate With Me video, you'll know because I mentioned it, I have some ornaments that are ice skates. And I knew that I wanted to incorporate them in some way, so I decided to hang them off the slate. And I love how this turned out. 
As you can see here, the Santa was just falling off the reed and the reed was so heavy because of the Santa that the command hook ended up falling. So I knew this was not gonna work. I ended up taking the Santa down and adding some ribbon on that side of the reed. The Santa went on the other little Christmas tree down on the floor and it actually worked out better that way. It's like they spell your name, it's insane. Now we're back here once again. And I'm surprised that everything has held up really well, even the Santa Claus, you guys. This is West Texas, the wind here is surreal, but this Santa Claus has always been standing up. That's how heavy it is. And that is going to be everything for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if this video gave you new ideas. If you did like it, I hope you can subscribe and I really hope I can see you in my next one. Bye. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another Christmas decorate with me. This time I'll be decorating my guest room for Christmas 2021. So if you like this video, I really hope you can consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and the notification bell so that you never miss any of my upcoming videos. So without any further ado, let's just jump right in. Your charm, all I ever wanted. For this particular project, I'm going to be working with things I already have. A few things I did get new this year. I know that it's very popular to place Christmas trees in bedrooms, but this is not very realistic for me to do this year because we already got a new Christmas tree. Maybe next year I'll get a smaller Christmas tree to put in one of the rooms. But this year, I wanted to keep it simple in the bedroom. So the first thing I'm doing is wiping down all of the surfaces very well before I start decorating. TV console I'm going to use this table runner I got from Target this year I actually used the same one on my kitchen island and I loved it so much I feel like it brings a lot of color and a lot of happiness to any spot or to any room and the main thing about this guest room is this blue wall that you're going to see in just a second when we bought this house, that's how the previous owners had this wall and I didn't want to change it because I feel like it is such a beautiful color and I can play around with different styles of decor for this room. But for this Christmas decor, I'm going to go in with a farmhouse, modern farmhouse style of decor incorporating a lot of silver, black, red, and honestly, I loved the, the result. In here, I'm putting up a garland on top of the bed and I'm going to add these galvanized snowflakes as ornaments that I already had. This is a perfect touch, but if you wanna add a garland on top of your headboard on your bed, then you can also do lights. They will go very, very beautiful at night for your decor. Sending a message that Christmas is at the door. The next thing I'm gonna work on is a sign that's going to go on top of the headboard of the bed. So I painted this sign black with chalk paint and I cut my letters with my Cricut machine. So I'm going to transfer them now. And if you see that I'm talking, it's not that I'm talking by myself. I actually had my headphones on and I was on the phone with my cousin. So that's why I'm talking all over the video. 
And on top of this sign, I'm going to hot glue these decorative stems. They are really beautiful. They are flocked and I actually got them from Hobby Lobby. And to place this wall decoration on my wall, I'm actually going to use command strips. It's the easiest and most convenient way to do these kinds of things. The next thing is just to put fresh clean sheets on the bed and they are all wrinkly because I did leave them in the dryer. So there you go, a real life moment for you. But doing all of this Christmas decor really fills me up with a lot of joy and a lot of happiness. I really hope in the near future that God can bless us, me and my husband, with a lot of babies and then I will get to decorate for them and I will get to share these moments with them as well. So I decorate because Christmas is my favorite holiday and to create memories with my husband. But let me know in the comment section down below, for whom do you decorate? Is it for you? Is it for your family? And what is it that brings you joy and keeps your Christmas spirit alive? I'm looking forward to reading you all in the comment section down below. Those decorative pillows I got from Walmart this year, they were $5 each. And this little blanket, I got it from Walmart from many years ago and it was around $5. If you don't wanna spend a lot in a decorative blanket, what you can do is actually go to Walmart and just buy fleece and just fold it in a way so that it's not noticeable that it's just fleece and just decorate with it. I used to do this all the time. I also placed a tray and decorated it just for an extra touch. This is probably something that's not going to stay up there every day when we have guests. And then for the other side of the bed, I'm going to place these Santa bags that I used to use on my Christmas tree before. And I think they'll look very beautiful in here. The next thing is to decorate my nightstand. So I got these mini Christmas trees. They are flocked and I'm cleaning all that they are shedding because they do shed a lot. So I'm going to place them on this nightstand and I'm going to kind of play around with the lamp and other decorations I want to add. That snowman actually came from Walmart this year and I'm going to add just a tiny piece of tabletop decor that was actually very inexpensive from Hobby Lobby this year. So once I was happy with all the elements, I moved on to the next nightstand and I'm going to do something very similar. I don't have a table lamp for this side of the bed, so I'm just going to place a couple of those mini Christmas trees, a nutcracker, and the same tabletop piece of decor that I use on the other nightstand. My cousin is coming to visit very soon and she's obsessed with London. So I thought that this beautiful nutcracker holding the big Ben was going to be very appropriate to place in the room. Also, the colors went together really well and overall, I'm super happy with the results. I'll show you how everything looked like, but the last thing I'm doing right here and I thought I'm including it was to vacuum my floors very well because floors are really needed after decorating. Closing down for business. 
And that is going to be everything for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if this video gave you any new ideas to decorate your own home with. I am so looking forward to reading you all. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I really hope I can see you in my next video. Bye. I knew, and maybe so did you, that everything would change from now on. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to decorate your Christmas tree like a professional. I'm going to give you all of the Christmas tree decorating ideas for 2021. Also in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a step-by-step -step process on how to decorate your Christmas tree. And this process will be useful to you regardless of the style of decor that you wanna do on your Christmas tree this year. It's also budget friendly and it's also friendly if you have have old decorations or ornaments that you want to reincorporate into your Christmas tree this year. This is not my real Christmas tree, by the way, this is just one that I created for the purpose of this video. My real Christmas tree is going to be on an upcoming video and on that one, I'm going to be using more traditional colors with Christmas ornaments that have been in my family for over 30 years. So if you wanna watch that video and you like this video, I really hope you can consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and let's just jump right in. your Christmas tree, I strongly recommend that you add ribbon to take it to the next level. Last week I posted a full tutorial on how to add ribbon to your Christmas tree in several different ways. For this Christmas tree I decided to go with a plaid and buffalo check and a third thinner option of black velvet ribbon. This is a combination that usually I wouldn't use on a Christmas tree. I like decorating with red and traditional colors, but since this was a demonstration video, I thought on working with a color palette that I've never worked before just to prove that this scheme or step-by-step -step tutorial can work with any style or color palettes that you wanna work with. If you want to watch my tutorial on how to put Christmas ribbon on your Christmas tree, I am for sure linking that video down below and this is the result of the first step. The next step is to focus on statement pieces that your Christmas tree will have. For this Christmas tree, I chose these white flowers that are stunning. I got them from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to make sure to place them proportionally on the Christmas tree and each one looking into different directions, if that makes sense. You don't have to use flowers. You can also use Santa Claus bags. You can use Santa Clauses. You can use whatever you think it's gonna look good, but make sure you add it in this stage of your decor so that you can place it in a strategic way. I can barely find the time to sleep. After your statement pieces, the next thing to add is going to be your filler ornaments. These are ornaments that they all look the same and they're just meant to make your Christmas tree look fuller. I chose these white balls that I also got from Hobby Lobby. I believe 12 of them were $5 and I'm going to make sure to place them in no specific order. There's no rules to actually hang ornaments on your Christmas tree, but after those, I'm going to go in with my special ornaments. 
I chose these snowflakes, but honestly, this is a moment in which you're going to use those special ornaments that you've had for a long time. Those that are heirlooms or that they mean so much to you. Place them strategically. And if you feel like you still have empty spaces on your Christmas tree, go ahead and choose a second type of filler ornaments. I decided to go with these flocked pine cones and I'm going to carefully place them in empty spaces in my Christmas tree. If you have enough of those special ornaments, then you're probably not gonna need to do this step. You're probably not gonna even need to have filler ornaments to begin with, but this is just a guide so that you can build a beautiful Christmas tree that looks elaborated and that looks like a professional actually decorated it. These are the good times with you, baby. This here is just gonna be just like the ribbon, the Christmas stems are also a key element to bring your Christmas tree to the next level. I chose these cranberry-like black and white stems and I'm starting at the top of the tree. I know that that looks a little bit funny right there. I'm adjusting it as I want, but once I place the Christmas tree topper, it's going to look beautifully. So the way I like to place these is outwards and facing always to the top. If they are stems that are meant to hang, then just make sure that they're hanging beautifully on the Christmas tree. These have several strategic ways to place them. I like to put them on the sides of the tree, in between gaps of the Christmas ribbon, sometimes on top of ornaments, and as long as you're doing it proportionally, it's going to look beautiful. And this is the stage of the Christmas tree in which you're going to see that everything is actually coming together it's just gonna be you and me And this is how our beautiful Christmas tree is looking like. Like I said, I've never decorated a black and white Christmas tree before, but this process works for any style. So now I'm going to create a topper with the remaining ribbon. This was a request from you all after my Christmas tree ribbon tutorial. So I'm starting with some loops that are the same size of my hand. I overlapped the two types of ribbon that I'm working with. So what I'm doing is that for every loop that I make, I twist the ribbon, create the loop, and I try to do it one to the side, one to the top, one to the bottom, just like creating a circle with all the loops, kind of like a flower or a bouquet, however you want to see it. But once you have all of that, then I'm going to tie it up with another piece of ribbon. You can use wire or you can use a hair tie, honestly. And once that's properly secured, I'm going to go ahead and open all of those loops that are overlapped to create the most beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous bow and super affordable Christmas tree topper, in my opinion. I'm much rather having one of these than a Christmas tree topper that I purchased at the store. I did leave the ends of the ribbon loose and very long to create a beautiful effect, kind of like a cascade effect over the Christmas tree, but I'm going to make sure the tips are cut like so, so that they look like beautiful Christmas tree gifts. The good times with you, baby. This year is just gonna be you and me. Hang by the fire and chill. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Do 
not neglect the bottom of your Christmas tree. Not only use a tree skirt, but add just a few elements that can complete the look of your Christmas tree. I'm going in first with this tree skirt that I made myself four years ago with some Walmart fleece and ribbon and a hot glue gun because I couldn't afford a regular tree skirt and I'm still using this one, it's beautiful. And I'm going in with small details like a sign and a couple of tabletop decor pieces to just complete the look. If you're wondering why the bottom of my Christmas tree is empty, it's just because I have a puppy and I don't want him messing out with the ornaments. But this is how the bottom of the Christmas tree looked like. And it's all finished and beautiful. And honestly, doing this didn't take a long time for me or a lot of money either. It's just a matter of daring to play around with certain elements that you've never used before to create a look that you love on your Christmas tree this year. For this video thank you so so much for watching let me know in the comment section down below if you learned something new from this video and if you're going to do something different on your Christmas tree this year thanks to this video I am so looking forward to reading you all again thank you so so much for watching subscribe if you haven't already and I really hope I can see you in my next video bye we find the time to sleep yeah I spend my time running around Keeping people please But this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five new ways on how to put ribbon on your Christmas tree. I'm going to be working with different ribbons and different styles, depending on the look that you wanna go for this year for your Christmas tree. Also, this video is going to be part one of my Christmas decor series for 2021. And I know it's a little early, we're still in October, but I wanna go ahead and get started with this tutorial because this is going to be the base for other videos that I'm going to be putting out in the future. So if you like this video, I really hope you can consider consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and the notification bell so that you never miss any of my upcoming videos and without any further ado let's just jump right in so we're starting with a traditional ribbon this is going to be the base for the rest of the styles that I'm going to show you today and I'm starting with this very traditional looking gold ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby I am starting at the top of my Christmas tree by creating loops to give the illusion that the ribbon is actually coming out of the tree. When it comes to decorating your Christmas tree with ribbon, there's two key things that can make or break the look of your ribbon. Number one, how far away are you tucking in that ribbon at the end of each loop that you're making? And number two, whether you are twisting the ribbon to start each loop. In here, I'm demonstrating what I'm talking about. Do not start a loop without twisting your ribbon because not doing so will make your ribbon look very plain and with no dimension at all. We want the ribbon to look beautiful and to look like it's coming out of the Christmas tree. So let me show you one one more time. I'm going to twist that ribbon and then I'm going to tuck it in as far away as I can into the Christmas tree, securing it with one of the stems. You want to make it so that it's not obvious that the Christmas tree is holding the ribbon. And this principle applies to placing ribbon on garlands and wreaths, not only Christmas trees, but because we're decorating a Christmas tree, if you want to do it in a traditional way, you can just do the loops surrounding your Christmas tree. However, because my Christmas tree is placed against a wall, I'm just decorating the front part. And what I'm doing is basically zigzagging the ribbon around the entire tree. And you can either measure 
the loops so that they match to one another or you can just do it in a very organic way it really doesn't matter just make sure that you're spending time opening up those loops like I'm doing here and also hiding where the loops are coming from if that makes sense if you're following all of these steps and you still feel like your Christmas ribbon is looking a little crazy, don't panic. Just finish off decorating your Christmas tree with all of your ornaments and the rest of your decorations, and then the Christmas tree will come all together. Adding ribbon to your Christmas decor is definitely going to bring it up to the next level. The next style I am sharing with you is this vertical ribbon. This is perfect for a farmhouse Christmas tree and for that reason I chose this black and white plait ribbon that actually matches my flannel. This ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby and 30 feet was just enough to do three vertical strings of ribbon on my 7.5 feet Christmas tree. For my Christmas tree it was enough ribbon but keep in mind that my tree is against a wall therefore I only decorated one side of it. So if your tree is bigger than mine or not against a wall, I might consider getting more than just 30 feet of ribbon for doing this project. What I'm doing here is basically creating loops downwards with my ribbon on my Christmas tree. I am using the same method I explained earlier for creating the loops. However, because I am twisting my ribbon, naturally the next loop will fall one-sided or tilted. So you can choose to either straighten it up or you can choose to leave it with the movement as it falls for a more organic and rustic look like I chose to do. And for the ends of each string of ribbon, you can choose to tuck it in or you can choose to leave it unfinished like I'm doing here. I cut at the tips like I would do with a bow. And this is the final result. Seriously, it came out so pretty. The next style is the one-sided ribbon. It consists in, well, adding a lot of ribbon to just one side of your Christmas tree to give it a playful and fun look. This style of ribbon will go perfect with a candy cane Christmas tree or an elf themed Christmas tree. To achieve this look, I recommend going with two or three different ribbons that you can combine. I had a total of 60 feet of ribbon for my 7.5 feet Christmas tree and I used it all, so don't be shy when picking up your ribbon. The principle for this look is the same as the vertical ribbon, this time going with larger loops and accentuating the zigzag effect in between each loop. I do suggest that the ends of each string you leave unfinished like I'm doing right here to give it that messy yet very beautiful look. Once you're done with your first string, go ahead and start the next one with the second type of ribbon you chose. Do the same thing as before, but this time make sure these loops are crisscrossing the other loops you created in your first string. The objective here is that all of that side of the Christmas tree is almost completely covered in ribbon. You will do this with a third and a fourth string of ribbon, alternating in between the types of ribbons that you choose. And I don't even know how many times I set ribbon. but. If you feel like along the way this is looking messy and you're not too convinced on how it's turning out, then I will tell you to keep going because I promise you it will come together at the end. Again, just don't forget to follow the instructions on how to do the loops that I show you at the beginning of this video and also zigzagging and crisscrossing your loops because that will be the key so that this look comes together at the end. In here, I'm going in with my fourth and last 
string of ribbon. You can use as many strings as big your Christmas tree is. Like I said before, I used two rolls of 30 feet each of ribbon and this was enough to cover that entire area of my Christmas tree. However, this is the most elaborated look that I'm showing you today, but oh, it's so worth it because I really loved how it turned out at the end. However, this look on a Christmas tree is not completed without a gigantic bow as a Christmas tree topper. I had a little bit of leftover ribbon, so I decided to show you how to do one of those bows that will look so nice with this style. So to do that, I'm just grabbing a bunch of loops in my hand. I grab a piece of ribbon, twist it, create a loop, and once I'm done with all the ribbon, I will make sure to open all of those loops very well like if they were a flower and then with the leftover ribbon I'm going to secure it in place now keep in mind that I'm using wired ribbon if your ribbon is not wired then I'll suggest using a hair tied or something that can keep it in place I'm going to put this on top of my Christmas tree and as you can see it ended up looking so beautiful The next style is going to be the crisscross ribbon. This look I saw on one catalog from Sam's Club and I thought it would be very interesting to try. It consists in hanging one thick ribbon across the Christmas tree and then going in with a thinner ribbon to crisscross all of those spots where the loops from the first ribbon begin and end. I know all of this sounds and looks complicated. To achieve this look in a very easy way, start with your thick ribbon. Hang it on a traditional way on your Christmas tree like I explained before in this video. And because this is a crisscross effect, make sure you're placing the loops on a diagonal way all across the tree. Can we also take a second to admire how beautiful is this ribbon? I got it from Walmart this year and I'm loving it. Okay, once you're done with your first ribbon, it is time to go in with the thinner one. I tried many different ways to hang it, including passing the ribbon behind the loops. And while it is possible to do, it is a lot of unnecessary work for not that great results. I found the easier way is to work with small pieces of this ribbon. Start by covering the gaps of the thicker loops with one loop of your thinner ribbon. And then just simply go ahead and cut the remainings. It is that easy. It looks better and you have more liberty in playing around with the crisscross effect and the direction you want to give to each thinner loop. And this is the final result, indeed a very clever idea, and also loving this color combination. If you're looking for a more structured ribbon effect, then the zigzag idea is for you. This idea I saw on Pinterest and thought it would work with almost any style of Christmas tree that you wanna go for. The whole idea of this look is to create a zigzag downwards on your Christmas tree and then going in with a second string of ribbon and basically create a mirror effect with the zigzag. To achieve this look, start by creating a large loop at the top of the Christmas tree, then start going down making a zigzag with every loop that you make. Make sure you're working with larger loops from the beginning and that you're tilting your loops enough so that they create a nice effect. Also so that they're easy to recreate in a mirror effect with the next string of ribbon that you do like I'm doing right here. Don't get discouraged if your loops are not perfectly aligned. I did not notice two of mine are not until I saw it on camera. 
but this is a more structured look. However, it'll be a matter of your preference, whether you want to do it more structured or more organic, because this style you can do with any type of Christmas decor that you want to do. And that is going to be everything for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope this video has given you new ideas on how to hang your Christmas ribbon on your Christmas tree. Let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite ribbon that I used today and which style did you like the most? Again, thank you so, so much for watching. If you are curious to know how I like decorating Christmas trees so that they look like a professional did it, stay tuned because my next video on this Christmas Decorate With Me series is going to be all about that. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I really hope I can see you in my next video. Bye.